gotten. Boom. Hmm. Gossip Guys here, your one and only podcast delving into the scandalous lives of Manhattan's elite. And welcome to season two, episode 12 of Gossip Guys Max. Minions 2. The and as always, minions. the second yeah. Minions, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't get the two, Andy, it's the second one, yeah. The second, a sequel, uh, <laughs> because it's a big episode. This, I'm Andy, Aaron's the other guy over there that you can't see, but maybe you can. We're, vide we're videotaping this whole thing today, it's guys. It's a whole new thing. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and ooh, that yeah was our very special guest. We have, let's see, I wrote down the intro. We have actress, model, nutritionist, lifestyle blogger, mother of three, Boulder Living, skiing extraordinaire, our favorite minion from Gossip Girl, inspiration to us all, Nicole Fischella, on with us Woo! today. What's yeah. up? I want that intro to be played like anytime I walk into a room. That's what I'm thinking. Like just all these things. <laughs> I think we should all, every time someone, yeah, it's like a royal court, you know, like. Yeah, now totally. Yeah, yeah <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted a theme song. So every time I'd walk in, I have a theme song playing. It's like the like walk-up song for baseball. That was like for me, like yeah. whenever you go up to bat, like you, I think everyone deserves that. Like a nice little, I don't know, look at me. Here I am, yeah. I've entered. <laughs> Some respect. Uh, and and yeah. all the respect goes to you, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining, uh, rejoining. Thanks the for coming, side. yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. On. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I'm like loving this Gossip Girl 2.0 rebirth that's going on now. It's I, I think it's awesome. I think it's like so cool that, I was part of something that was really just like a legendary show and then they're doing it all over again. And now people are super excited about even the beginning of it all again. So it's fun for me. Yeah, in a, in a way, maybe it's cause we've been living it for years now but it feels like the show never really died. You know, it's it like, never left us. It never left. It yeah. certainly never left Aaron. He's been, he was waiting, trying, looking in improv rooms, finding, yeah. trying to find someone that'll talk about- I was gossip. like, who will talk about gossip grow with me? Andy, is that you? Is that, that was, you gonna talk with me? And I, and I was too dumb to say no. Uh, and, now, and now we're here. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think when we started that we thought a reboot, I think we talked about it jokingly. It's like, oh yeah, we'll yeah. be- If we uh, have to come back, we will. Yeah, now here we are, we're back. We've been, we've been we're sending doing telegrams it. to Josh Schwartz for years. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's happening. And we are, we are gonna definitely talk about, yeah, 2.0. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I we're definitely interested in what you wanna see in the, I guess it, uh, Saffron doesn't want it to be called a reboot, right? So it's a revival sequel series. Sequel series. Sequel, sequel series. I like yeah. that. Sequel right, because it it picks up like what I think it's like eight years. Eight years. After, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eight years, and yeah. we're all we're all Gossip Girl now. Yeah. yeah. And all, all these young kids, they're having the time of their life. They don't know what it's like having Gossip Girl, and then Gossip Girl comes back. Yeah. <laughs> And then who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? You know, hilarity will ensue. You know? <laughs> uh, Upper East Side hijinks. I wonder if the show, like it took a while, I think, for the show to realize it was a comedy. I wonder if it's going to know immediately, like this is what it is, or if it's going to be high drama. I mean, it'd be both. You take, you, they take yourselves very seriously. That's where the comedy comes from. Yeah. That is so funny that you said that actually too, because I remember kind of being part of it and it was not like that at all. <laughs> like it wasn't, it didn't feel like a comedy in the beginning, but then as it kept going on, I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be kind of funny. You know, it was, I, I realized it even being on the show, like I, it wasn't at first and then it was. So it's funny that you guys noticed that too. Did, is it, do you think they were playing to you and the cast like strength in terms of the humor or it's sort of like, well, we can't really take this seriously. It's sort of, I guess it was a discovery or, or did you think it was already in the DNA? I feel like, I feel like it's part of both. I feel like it's like everybody, the way that we all interacted probably helped, you know what I mean? Kind of, cause like they, you know, the writers, they have an idea and they start writing and then they start writing for you once they see you and see the personalities come out and all that. So I think it was partially that. And then I also think, yes, like, these people are, I mean, is this real life? It's not real life, right? Like, I mean, like, it's like not, no, that's not what people are doing. I mean, you know, 16, not. 17 years old aren't like sitting at bars drinking martinis, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not happening that I know of at least. Well, I mean, these 12 people maybe are the ones that sort of had the key to the city, you know? Uh, and that's yeah. what I think what's scary about it to me. Like, cause I think that is, part of it is real. Uh, um, yeah, part of it's real and part of it is for the viewers to see a fantasy. And I right. think that's I where the, true, the yeah. comedy comes in because yeah. it is a fantasy. And then you're like, you have to laugh at it. Otherwise, it's just kind of scary. 
it's it's, right, right. it's it's really dark if you just sort of take it as it, <laughs> it is. can't be dark yeah, yeah. well because it's like it sort of feeds into the baser part of ourselves like gossip girl is just basically people judging each other and tearing people down constantly over and over yeah. even your friends your family and of course we as humans love to do that so it's like yeah. you get to see it and it's and, and it's funny because we have you know, it, it's funny because they're friends and they all go back to each other and they're like okay if they can deal yeah. with it so can we yeah yeah it's like the Kardashians, like something like that. It right? is actually, that is. <laughs> it's I like any other family. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're all just in the shadow of the Kardashians now. Everything oh, is totally. a part of that empire. So true. <laughs> um, well, Nicole, uh, I think we, we've already we've already dove in, so this is great. But let's sort of dial it back to the, the your origin story. We uh, we used to do this with every guest we had on, whether they actually were on the show or not. But uh, how did Gossip Girl? enter your life did you get a blast on your phone before anything it just said like come to this <laughs> like address how did it how did it come to you um a blast on my phone yeah exactly you mean you mean actually how it happened on the show yeah <laughs> that would have been great <laughs> i thought i thought you're asking i thought you were asking like how did you get the part or something well that was but that was asking, the that is the question but i did it in a question. very annoying way yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, because I'm like, now I've got to figure out two answers. Okay, no. So Gossip Girl came my way because they were, this is the real way, right? They were looking for a couple of models to play Isabel and Kati. And I was work, a working model in New York City for a while. And um, I had done a bunch of commercials, but not any real acting. Um, but I always had that feeling in the back of my mind. I'm like, I think I'm going to end up as an actor for some reason. I was like, I'm not like I'm in love with it or anything. I just had this feeling that it was going to happen. And I, my agents, they, they were like, there's a big show. We can't tell you what it is. Can't tell you. It's going to be huge, but we cannot tell you anything about it. Here are the sides for it. Like these are the lines, memorize the lines, do the best that you can, whatever. But like, literally it was like, mom, like we did not know anything about what it was about. They're like, it's based on a book. Oh. That could be anything, right? They didn't right. say anything else, right? Like it could be anything. So we went in, we did it. And I was, I mean, I'm, I was aged out in terms of like, I'm way older than everybody else. So, you know, like I didn't even follow these books when, you know, like the books that are actually on the shelf. I had no idea about them anyways, once I found out what it was. Um, so yeah, I just went in and I auditioned for it uh, like three times. And luckily I got the part, but it was one of those things where I, it was the, in my, in the way it was the easiest audition I ever had, because at that point I was like, I've got nothing to lose. Right. Cause I didn't have an acting career and I was a successful model and I was working and I'm just like, so if I don't get the part, then like, who cares? I'll just continue on with my normal life, which is great. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's the best yeah. way to go into something. You get a safety net and yeah, yeah. house money. Totally. Yeah. And I, I was, I was lucky that way. And I think that honestly in the audition room, my kind of attitude about it, you know, like my personality came out and I was just like, not very nervous. You know, I started to get nervous at the, like the, the very, very last audition because like Josh and Stephanie were there and, you know, they were like, it's between you and like two other people. And then I was just like, oh, okay, this is actually, this might be a real thing. And that's when the nerves started to kick in. Did you ever see those two other people and, and, and get to do the gossip girl? Like I'm better than you scene. <laughs> I wish. No, I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you think like if they had, well, I guess it's not like you knew what the book was, but you didn't even know the name of the show sort of when you went out for it or like what it, yeah. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. They have like secret names, you know. That's yeah. True. A lot of times they do that. A lot of times they do that with um, even, you know, big commercials and stuff like that. Like a lot of the companies, they will, like if it's a big company, they won't tell you what you're going for because they don't want anyone to like know any of the backstory or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and I, I was, you mentioned, you know, sort of that you'd never acted before, but you, that, that was sort of, you knew that was where your path lied. And also that the audition was easy, but I was just wondering if you think, I mean, obviously probably that modeling experience came in handy in terms of the audition and being on camera and all that stuff. Totally. I, I always felt very comfortable on camera. I just had never really had like formal acting training. And when I was really young, honestly, when I was like 10 years old, I did like summer theater, stuff like that, you know, but it wasn't, I wasn't trained. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't auditioning for a bunch of different things, you know, like I didn't, I didn't get TV auditions aside from commercials. I didn't do like, you know, legit TV film, anything like that type of auditions before. That was really my first one. What uh? What did you play in summer theater? What was your finest role? What was uh, oh 
yeah. I, I got this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we did, so we did um, a rendition of the Little Red Riding Hood nice. and nice. I played the wolf. Wow. So I feel really yeah. good about that. Yeah. I feel yeah. really, really good. That was, it was really yeah. amazing. I, I, I think yeah. there's a line from the wolf to Isabel. I think there's something there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're equally as dangerous. I think. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <Don't cross. laughs> Whoa. That was uh, that was what you do to the kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trust. <laughs> uh, what was your like? What was your favorite of the commercials or modeling gigs you had before Gossip Girl? If you Ooh. had one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I did a TV commercial for Pantene, the hair care that was awesome because like they flew us to Argentina and oh, yeah. it yeah it was really cool and we just like it was just dope like we were there for a week and we the, I don't feel like the it wasn't like a ton ton of work you know what I mean so there was time to explore which was awesome and that was a crazy that was crazy too because I went there and Ro you know Robbie Williams the singer I, I feel like that? I do uh, it I just like makes it me want to think of Robin Williams but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no no oh you're, like you're on a Williams. first name basis <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Robbie Williams he um I think that's his name shoot what if I'm totally messing it up now that'd be funny um <laughs> no that him. that's him that's him he's that song and I don't even remember the song but um he was staying at the same hotel and he had a friend that I just like hit it off with just talking just like you know being friend friendly to each other and my, the whole team, like all the crew and all the models, like after me just talking to this guy for the night and like, you know, making friends with all of them, got tickets for everybody to go to the show. And like, it was just, it was awesome. That was like probably the most memorable experience. That was, was your really first fun. Gossip Girl episode. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you get the party at the end. <laughs> yeah, right, totally, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You mentioned that sort of you were aged out, but clearly not because you got the the role. But yeah, I think I, we were uh, watching some of your, inter your interviews about it. And you're saying that you were, you know, 28 playing a 16 year old. And it's yeah. and that's like a tried and true TV tradition for like yeah. adults to play high schoolers. Uh, right. And so, so a welcome to the club. Like that's, I feel like a very <laughs> exclusive club to be in. Right. <laughs> be like, how was it to go back to the roots, I guess, to be, to be a 16 year old when you're 28 or is there yeah. no, no difference? <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly, so interestingly, I have a younger brother who's 10 years younger than me. And so at that point, like I kind of, he was, he was telling me a little bit about like girls around his age, you know? And like, it, I feel like that really actually helped. He was like, I would be kind of, because my brother and I are very close. So I've met, you know, a bunch of his friends and, you know, I was, I kind of took some pieces from that. I'm like, oh, these girls are like young, you know what I mean? High schoolish kind of girls, right? Like this is how they are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I felt like it, that really helped a lot too. And then I was just like, this is fun to kind of do, like, I don't, yeah. not all that heaviness anymore. It's like, everything's light, <laughs> you know? I also think like the high schoolers in Gossip Girl were like, sort of acting like 25 year olds the whole time. Well, that's true too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but none of them were really 25. So they actually didn't know what 25 was, which was right. Fun. right. <laughs> but I had that life experience. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, oh man, we have so many questions. Uh, okay. So we're going to get in Isabel's head here. Uh, okay. In the, in the classic episode, the Blair bitch project, uh, Isabel was revealed to have broken her arm in a spa uh, at a ski resort. So it's not, it wasn't skiing. It was in the spa. Get yeah, yeah, no. What do you know the story here? What happened or, or did you write it? What happened with Isabel? How'd Dude, you break your arm? Let me tell you, I will tell you this. I showed up to work that day and they just start giving me like a sling and I'm like, what are you doing? And like, what are you doing? Which is awful. Which meant that I didn't read the whole script probably. And so <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't. I mean, like I, maybe I just missed that part. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, they were, they were like, Isabel broke her arm in this episode. I'm like, oh, okay. What happened? They're like, oh, whatever, just put it on. Like nobody, <laughs> it was just sort of like, it just happened. You know what I mean? Um, but I have broken my arm before. So I just told them to put the sling on the same arm, arm that I'd broken. Cause I was kind of used to that. Okay. But, Method acting. Um, I like that. Yes, totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. But, um, that's, that's it. Honestly, it's just like, I think it was just like a one line. That's what Blair, whoever said it was supposed to say, she broke her arm. That's it. And there's no backstory. It was not real. I didn't actually break my arm. <laughs> but if like, 
how do you think Isabel would have done it? We're trying to get you to to. to oh, get back I thought in. you wanted. Like, like, oh, no, 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 no. The story was great. No, the, well, no, the story, the story was, was good because I did think maybe you did break your arm because it's so random to write that in, and it just right, seems right? random, you know. So yeah, but then is Isabel in the jacuzzi and she's grabbing the champagne and maybe she slips and hits it? Who knows? Who? How did it happen? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, some similarities there because like that's actually how I, not actually how I broke my arm. It wasn't grabbing champagne. But, um, <laughs> that would have been good if it was. It was um, a bottle no, of wine. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was actually a bottle of tequila, but you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that that's exactly how Isabel would have done it. I mean, like Isabel is a party girl. She's a party girl. Like she's just like anywhere anywhere isabel goes the party is going to be so if it's like at the ski resort she's got her friends she's got the jacuzzi whatever i think it was more along the lines of though like in my family's full like we have like a full like penthouse suite type of thing in the ski resort you know what i mean so it probably just happened in there and not like you know like my personal spa you're yeah oh man must be nice that's, that's great yeah that, that's what i'm thinking <laughs> my personal spa. yeah when, when warren buffett is your godfather it was probably nice <laughs> That's probably what it looks like. Yeah. That's right. Like, it's like my own spa and everyone comes to my place for the spa. Yeah. yeah. You ever send a, a message to Warren Buffett? Hey, I'm playing your goddaughter on a TV show. Uh, do you think I can- Is it possible? Your... Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. we could talk a little yeah. bit, maybe throw some, some cash research. this way. Like, yeah. you know, anything like that would be great. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would, I mean. <laughs> yeah. If it's up to him, he'll take you to McDonald's though. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that still would be quite the experience. <laughs> would be. Quite, yes, for sure. <laughs> Though Isabel doesn't eat McDonald's. So. That's true. She would wouldn't order anything. Have a water. No, no. <laughs> it'd fully be a water and be like, "Do you serve alcohol here?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> water or do you serve alcohol here? I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna ask. Uh, because I mean, obviously, Isabel is not a great person. And, and you clearly are a nice, great, I will say great person. I don't know you that well, but we'll, we'll make that leap. Um, okay. But I was one, it, I also feel like there is some, you have some snark. And, and that is the, the word that Aaron described when rewatching your episodes, like snark. That's the, that's the adjective. So I was oh, wondering yeah. if you had, like, when playing Isabel, did you have any other things you're like, oh, I am like Isabel in this way? Or is it just like, I am so not this person at all? Um, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, there's some similarities there, right? Like, I don't feel like I, I was at, you know, even when I was in high school, I don't feel like I was ever like a, you know, clicky kind of, you know, person like that. I definitely wasn't that, but, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, the lot, a lot of the, that's the snark is the right word. It's like, it's like the right, it's that little bit of that personality that that's, it's totally there. <laughs> like, there's a little bit of that going on at some points. <laughs> Who, who were you in high school then? If you weren't part of the, the clique or like if you were the most, what gossip char girl character were you the most like in high school? If there is one. I mean, I feel that like- That really is a good, yeah, that's a really good question. So who is the character that you would think was the most, you know, friends with different cliques? Cause like, that's how I was. I was kind of like a floater. I was like, I was friends with these people. I was friends with these people. You know what I mean? Like I, I could kind of pass around through all the cliques and everybody- was cool with that. You know what I mean? Who is that? You're, That's not you're anybody. The, in you're the glue, right? you're the drug dealer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, nu the nucleus of it all. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel yeah. like that's how I was. Who was like that in Gossip yeah. Girl? Was, I don't know. Like, I wanted to say Dan, but that's not really the case because they hated him, but they yeah. loved him. And it's like- yeah. I, he wanted to be that guy. He wanted to go he back and forth, but yeah, he wanted to be the bridge, you know, the Brooklyn bridge, you know, he wanted to sort of connect yeah. everything, but- Right. Um, but you, you can't have your kick eat it too. You just can't, you no. got to have one life or the other. Yeah, totally. that was the lesson. It took six seasons, but we figured it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like it might be one of the minions because I feel like they did sort of have, they probably knew the most people. Cause I feel like Blair and Serena, they're very all involved in their own thing. Like they never hung out with anyone else besides each other really, or yes, any yeah. romantic guest star. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe a young Lily Bass, who knows? Ooh, okay. Or a Lily Vanderwoodson, of course. Yeah. Um, right, right. <laughs> Of yeah. all her many names. Yeah, yes, exactly. right? I, think, I mean, most people don't have yeah. like a, I'm not, like no one is actually like most of these people. Uh, <laughs> I would be scared. Well, like, I mean, I think you have, like people have the, some of the Blair tendencies or the Serena tendencies, but no one is fully them, uh, which is goes into the fantasy aspect of like. Yeah. It's so, yeah, it's so funny though, because people, I mean, like people love to 
name themselves as one. Are you a Blair? Are you a Serena? Like, it's so funny to me how people do that. You know, it's just strange. <laughs> it's, been, it's sort of like Betty and Veronica, Aaron and I had talked about that too, because they are sort of, they're not opposites exactly, but they sort of, they kind of are, I guess. One's very sort of laid right. back and the other's just very type yeah. A. Right. Intent. Yeah. And also exactly. sort of blonde brunette. And we have to sort of pit women together. Right. Exactly. So different. So different. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Their I hair know, is different. So uh, Their hair is different. Then they must be. One's an yeah. inch. <laughs> the other one's okay. That's how it is. No, that's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Who Who is your favorite character? Like, besides yourself, of course. Oh, of course. No. Um, who was my favorite character? So, oh, gosh. I... I actually, I really liked Dan. I thought that he was just like a nice, like, I liked the lonely boy thing. I thought it was kind of cool and cute, you know? That was me. I, I, was, I liked Dan too. <laughs> you, like, you like Dan too? Yeah, yeah. I like Dan. I liked, I really liked Dan. I and then you kept watching Dan. the show and realized you didn't like Dan anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think, I think we got to just ask it right now. What did you think of Dan being Gossip Girl? I don't even know. I mean, I was like, that's just bizarre. <laughs> I, I was like I was like that's yeah. bizarre even I, I even remember having conversations like all of us are just like who's gossip girl like we don't know you know like we nobody knew it just all kind of came out at the end and we were all just like huh that's <laughs> it really really you know I'm this like is, okay. this is what you do when I leave yeah. <laughs> yeah, Isabel exactly. never would have let that happen no no, no, <laughs> no. never never <laughs> Did you, like, who did you think it was? Or did you, like, if you were writing the show, who would you have made uh, Gossip Girl? Well, so I actually thought that it would be a minion for sure. Like, I thought it was going to be like a Penelope, maybe. Mm -hmm. I thought like, you know what I mean? Like someone like that. That's what I thought. But um, not like someone in like the inner, you know, <laughs> like the main, main character. I just didn't think that. Yeah. And it doesn't really make sense when you actually watch the show. But yeah, I think. I mean, it felt like they, I don't know, like the plan obviously changed throughout because I feel like if the show had ended in season two or three when the minions were like, your group of minions were like in it more, it made sense. But then they sort of went away when they went to college. I, there was kind of, but not really the yeah. same thing. It was kind of, yeah. I think that's why Dorota then became the favorite because she was sort of the constant. Yeah, like I the outsider love, love watching. Yeah. Dorito, I love Dorito. <laughs> <laughs> we would just, we would just, we would just make for all of us, you know what I mean? Like with her too, we'd be like, what a name, like Dorito. Like we would just <laughs> yeah, I love Susanna though, she's awesome. She's a, she's, she's a great, guest yeah. of the pod, a friend of the pod. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's so cool. I haven't talked to her in so long. Oh my gosh. Since I, I feel like since I left New York, I've lost a lot of connections. You know what I mean? Like I keep in touch with a few people here and there, but you know. Well, uh, we, we did, we did hear that Leighton is probably your, your best friend of the, the cast or of the Gossip Girl world. Is that accurate? Yeah, for sure. We're pretty close. Like her and I are close. We've really, you know, we spent a lot of time together and we talk on the phone and we FaceTime and all that stuff. So we we have made an effort for sure. And it's it's great. Yeah. We're we've we became really close through the show, which was awesome. So she's one of the quarantine buddies. So I feel like the people that you actually talk to and hang out with, like I learned a lot about who my friends were, you know, because you can sort of control it better now. <laughs> right. No, that's so true. No, she's in California. So it's like straight up on, you know what I mean? Like on the FaceTime right, or right, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've talked to her during quarantine, if that's what yeah. you mean. I feel like even talking to people during quarantine, then you really realize, because you're just like, if I can't yeah. even pick up the phone, I'm like, <laughs> if I can't even send them a text, this is not, no, not part of my life anymore. <laughs> that's how I feel like it goes. You know what I mean? Oh, no, yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, it's just life. Because it's like, it I mean, like during quarantine, it's like you actually have the time now. Like there are no excuses. Like if you're not, you, you've got travel time back. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like you're not like traveling into work or anything. You've got the time now to talk to people. So if you That's don't want to talk to them, it's like, you know. mm, yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Hopefully they have friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, no, it's not your job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you think it is a job, it feels like a job, then ooh, yeah. And yeah. I think exactly. I definitely have that feeling sometimes. I'm like, oh man, I feel like I can't, I have to answer yeah. this, you know? Yeah. You have to it's hang. like, oh, there's Aaron <laughs> texting again. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's I, not not that scenario is why we do this. But like, I think that is one of the reasons why we continued the podcast through this year. It's like gave us something to like sort of focus on and like have a, yeah. a friend that we see on a regular basis to get us out yeah. of the, the doldrums sometimes for sure. Yeah, 
that that's that's a nice thing that you guys did that <laughs> um aaron let's ask about fashion right we talked about yes about? fashion Ooh, fashion. Uh, fashion well let's start with do you have a favorite outfit that isabel wore so probably not one that people think about, but I really like the field hockey one. Like okay. that one, I couldn't stop laughing about. I think it was like episode five. I yeah, I don't know, but yeah, that I, I just like honestly like I remember going to work that day, and I you know I did the fitting and all that stuff. But then just like when we were actually there and we're on location and we have the field hockey sticks, and I've got this get up on, and I'm like, what is this? I'm just like, this is insane. I've got like chains and a belt and like just things that you wouldn't actually, I mean, I'm athletic. So I'm just like, I barely even wear jewelry. Right. So I'm just like, this is over the top. Like, I feel like that was when I was just like, okay, yeah, this, this is when I'm not my character. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I love that. I love that one. It was simple. It was like simple. I think people would think that I'd think, think of something else, but I just remember that one being the one that I remembered the most. The most insane. Yeah. Did you yeah. take that yeah. one home? Uh, or did, no. you, did you get to take any home? Yeah. Which one did you take home? You know, we were not, we were not allowed to take specific thing home. Well, there were some things that I had asked for, you know, and like, they're just like, well, we have to hold on to it now for like continuity and like all this stuff, whatever they keep it for a while and then they go back in the last the designer if there's something that you know if you want to keep it um i got a couple of good things i got like a couple of purses some shoes mm. yeah some dresses yeah, nice. like yeah a couple things here and there you know you can start yeah. a gossip yeah. Girl yeah. museum uh yeah i don't have any of that stuff anymore <laughs> oh no it's a you got rid of the you got rid of the headband did you ever get dude, a headband? it's at the smithsonian now that's where it is yeah 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 no seriously dude let me tell you something crazy i went out to a bar one night and I had the bag that I loved and it got stolen <gasps> that night at the bar. Yes. Yes. So not good. Yeah. So that one is gone. That was my favorite thing. Um, you asked me something else. I think I'm. Oh, I just asked if you, you don't have the headband like hung up on a wall somewhere, like one of the headbands <laughs> oh my gosh. or anything. <laughs> so I never kept the headbands. And let me tell you something. I am wearing a headband today for the first time for you guys because I knew this was gonna be a video. I was awesome. like, let me just go ahead and wear a headband for them. Um, yes, I, I don't ever wear headbands. It's so not part of my normal life, but I have two daughters and they're obsessed with headbands. So I'm just like, I'm gonna <laughs> throw my daughter's headband on and see what it's like. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm, who oh, is now? <laughs> <laughs> that like also yeah. ages you down right so now you're yeah. back to 16 yeah back to 16. Yeah, it's all about the headband you put it on it's just like it go you go to a different place totally exactly oh, it's so true <laughs> i was re-watching i think the like it was the graduate episode before this where uh basically jenny is anointed queen and it was like this line that like barely was audible but she's just like okay last note no more headbands and i was just like Wow, Jenny, like throwing it down. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing it down. Because how are you going to say no more headbands, people? No. I mean, it makes that was sense. so classic. It makes sense, though. Like, as the queen, you need to start a new regime. You need to sort of figure <laughs> yeah. out your. I, I don't think Jenny ever figured out what her thing was, but she knew it couldn't right. be headbands, right? Like, that was Blair's thing. Totally. So you know, it's like when you come in and you're the new person taking over, you have to like make a stand and this is, this is it. This is this little J, you know? Yeah, little J was like a no headband, yeah, situation. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I guess, yeah, not so little J anymore, right? Just J, you know? Just J, just J now, right. <laughs> queen J. If if Isabel became queen, how do you think she would rule? Like, or, or like, what changes would you have made? Mm, good question. Um, what changes would I have made if I was queen? I think there would be, like, you would be allowed to have alcohol in, like, your school water bottle. I feel like that would be the first change. <laughs> Not, not only allowed, <laughs> probably encouraged. Yeah, yeah this is great. Be like, this, yeah. What, what drinks did you bring today, people? Because I do not want to sit through like another study hall today. What drinks did you bring? Uh, what was Isabel's drink of choice? I mean, I guess, was it the champagne? Is it the, what do you, I mean, you mentioned tequila. Is that your drink of choice? Or is tequila's that actually my drink of choice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's my drink of choice. I'm going to make it Isabel's, but no, she's definitely more of a champagne girl. Yeah, martini. So I feel like at maybe. that, yeah, mar martini champagne. I feel like at that age too, you're just like, you do what you think is like pretty and cool, right? And it's like, champagne yeah. is pretty and cool, but like, I mean, does it taste that great? Eh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like fine. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, I really don't like champagne. It's just sugar yeah. and it makes you feel I feel like terrible. most people don't really like champagne, right? Like, I think yeah, they just not... do it because like it, it looks good and it's, it's like festive ish or whatever. Yeah. It's there. People are exactly. celebrating. It's yeah, yeah. celebratory. 
some we've been stuck with champagne as the celebratory beverage and it's like oh man now i have to have one on new year's and i tell my wife i'm like i don't want to do it can we just drink right you're like, just like, no, we <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yeah. i mean yeah i totally agree with you my husband is just like he can't stand champagne at all but like i mean listen i'm one of those people though like if somebody puts a glass in front of me i'm not gonna be like no i'm not yeah, i'm not gonna that. say I'm no gonna, like, <laughs> who's gonna say no to alcohol <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we're equal <laughs> equal opportunity for sure you know like whatever totally, right I think also like if, if we could afford the type of champagne that they're drinking on the Upper East Side, it wouldn't taste like it wouldn't have that sugar. It would just be really, really sort of dry and probably like really good. That's it's probably I, really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really? I, I think I've had, you know, maybe like a hundred dollar bo like, bottle. I don't know. Maybe more than that. I'm not sure. But I haven't had yeah. those those top shelf things. Aaron, I, I know you and your dad's probably- I mean, yeah, we've some Dom, but it's not like I'm getting cases like Serena, you know? <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, I will say though, I actually, I love Dom. I do love Dom. Yeah. <laughs> Dom is good. So if it's like, if it's like a New Year's where people are like, we're going to serve Dom, I'll yeah. be like, okay, I'm yeah. there. People go to a good party with Dom. That's the, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. yeah. Or else just don't go. Yeah. That's right, it, yeah. right. If there's no Dom, I'm not going. There's no party, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It sort of okay. sounds like I'm like a huge alcoholic. I'm really not. I don't drink that. <laughs> You're just in character now. We get yeah. it. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. The headband. As soon as I put it on, I transform. You transform. That's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. I mean, that is the power, I think, of the wardrobe. I mean, especially Gossip Girl, like they're just the costumes is almost, I feel like it's the one of the main reasons that show has lasted is, is the fashion and sort of makes sense that like it brings you back. It's so true. I am I am dying to see what happens with the 2.0. I'm I'm just like I can't wait. I think I've seen a couple of the pictures and you know like mm -hmm. the I call them like the deconstructed school uniforms because at least yeah. I think ours were like they looked more uniform-ish. These are like real like deconstructed. It's like, you know, yeah. like the shirts out, things are cut off. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a lack of the school administration with no rules. I think that's an issue that we're having already. There's we no color. This that's the problem. Yeah. That, yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 She had you no guys problem. in line. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Are they more rebellious than even you you all were? That's scary. Can you imagine that? That, that yeah. is scary. I, I don't even know what they're doing, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what could they be doing that's more rebellious? Let's see. We're drinking. We're like... Murder. You know, murder. Uh, I'm untucking true. my shirt, guys. We're not going <laughs> to tuck these in anymore. The untuckables. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, so, uh, what are your thoughts on, well, A, the fashion, like, I mean, you mentioned the deconstructed, but like, do you like the look? Uh, and also, yeah, what do you want to see from this show? Honestly, I, I love, so what I've seen so far, I love it. I love that all of these new young actors are like, they're so dope looking, you know what I mean? Like, it's like the braids and the bald and the this. I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of, it's like, it's for the new generation, mm -hmm. right? Like, so I feel like that part is super cool. Um, I don't know. You know, I'd like to see, I, I, I feel like the show all, is already just by looking at everybody, they're so adult, right? Like they look, yeah. they look so adult. So I'm very, very curious to see how this all plays out. You know what I mean? Like how it all, how are they going to like look so adult and be so adult, but still have kind of like high school tendencies, <laughs> you know? But, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe they won't i mean we're we're in hbo max territory now and like we were speculating that True. it might be sort of like i mean it won't be like euphoria but like that it, they can basically mm. do anything they want yeah. now. And, and maybe that's sort of the scary thing of like what kids are doing now uh you know it's far we yeah. thought gossip girl was risque in 20 whatever year it was <laughs> right now, no, yeah, now so it's like ooh. Yeah, for the oh, CW, it was risque. Now it's, we're on HBO Max, guys. There's no hold bars. That's true. I didn't think about the HBO Max part. Yeah. Anything can happen, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, but I don't know if like, that's what we want. Like, do we just like, because I mean, that means, yes, there could be swearing and sex scenes and stuff, but like, A, they're, they're still in high school. Like, that's not what, <laughs> I don't, I mean, obviously the actor's gonna be over 18, but like, that's not, Right. I don't think that's the world we want, um, but I have no idea. But uh, it's, yeah. is it the world we're in? Yeah, that's, that's the I think, question. I feel like that's it might the be the world we're in. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'm with you in terms of the look. Like, I really like how all the actor, like all the actors, definitely have a very their own vibe going yes. on in, in yes. very different ways. And um, it's much more diverse too. I feel like that's yes. really cool. You know what I mean? I mean, I was like for sure the token, right? So like, you know, and that that's what what it was before, right? But I feel like now things are changing, you know, and I feel like they're doing a really good job, you know, demonstrating that change on TV. So I feel like that's great.
Yeah, thank God. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it actually will look like New York a little bit. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, because that is what. Yeah, you're right. That's what you, New York looks like. Totally like that. Did you feel that energy like in the show of like, oh, I'm the token, or like, oh, you know, there's just a lot of white people here? Is that or or? Yeah, I mean, like you know, that's like I mean, to be honest with you, that's like kind of my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like yes. I mean, yes. There's a lot of white. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in you know, a white suburb, you know what I mean? My husband is white, my kids are half white, you know what I mean? So like, I definitely, and then on, yes, I definitely felt that way there. It's not like anyone was just like, you're the black person or anything like that. Right. So it wasn't like that, but for sure. I mean, I feel like that's just sort of the experience of being yeah. in, you know, being in TV, being an actor and being a minority, you know? Yeah. Do you, like, are you, well, A, are you going to be getting in on this 2.0? Like, are, are we, are you, are you lobbying for it? And if so, what do you want yeah. Isabel to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm lobbying. I, I am lobbying. I've been emailing, <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, sending I, the I, cast I, director, uh, you know, right, for headshots. Right, right. No, no, I've been emailing and I'm just like, listen, I would, I, I just wanted to let them know. I mean, I emailed Stephanie and I was just like, I just want to let you know that I would be more than happy to come back and do anything. And she was like, all right, that's great to hear. You know what I mean? Awesome. Like, I, I don't think they have any plans for anything like that soon. Um, but I would totally go back. Why not? You know what I mean? That'd be yeah. so fun. It was just like one episode or something. Like, whatever. Like, it'd be great just to be back in New York and to be with everyone. The casting crew is amazing. You know what I mean? The producers are awesome. They're such nice people. Um, so it would be a really fun experience. And so it's funny because, like, on my Instagram and, you know, like, you know, my social people are just asking me. They're like, you know, they're just like, oh, you should come back as a mom. And I'm like, well, if it's eight years, that's not bad. That's not I'm just like, time. I would be like a young, I mean, like, I guess I could be, but I'm just like, oh, a young, kind of young mom, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I definitely have the life experience at this point with three kids, but I right. feel like it would be kind of a lot. For Isabel, it doesn't yeah. make, like, you would have to have a really young kid and they wouldn't be at Constance, unless it's like a genius, right. unless we're having young Sheldon. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Exactly. It would have to be. Yeah, that's so true. Right. Unless unless Constance has like a like a, a preschool that they opens. Ooh. Right. Because a lot Ooh, of yeah. the, a lot of these big yeah. fancy schools, they start in like pre-K or they used to start in kindergarten. I am so versed in this now, I feel like because of my kids. But it's like they used to start in kindergarten. It just keeps getting younger and younger and younger. Now they all start at like three. Yeah. And, and so they possible. have like daycare there for them and stuff like that. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So. Absolutely. This could work. It, it, this could work. Well, like, yeah, you also don't have to be a mom. You could just be a mo like a model or someone in the Upper East Side. I mean, what Aaron says all the time is it's a small island. It makes sense that you'll just be bumping into these people. Totally. I feel like I feel like that yeah. I should be I should be like the cousin of somebody. It's like a legacy thing at the school. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah, our yeah. family, like our, you know, our extended yeah. family, like we all sort of go to this school. And that's where I pop in again. Uh, where, where do you see Isabel at this time? Where, where would you like her to be? Ooh, yeah. So I, I thought about this because people ask me this question. So I thought about this. I feel like Isabel would be kind of making her way up in fashion, but not a designer, okay. more just like, you know, kind of socialite common, you know, making, you know, what do they call them for like fashion reporter type of person, but like more upscale than that. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Not just like kind of talking to all the models, just sort of like being there. You know what I mean? Like an Andre Leon tally. <laughs> You know? I don't know who that is, but it sounds. You good. don't know who that is? Under Leon no. Talley, he's like the style guru. Like, he, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like the style guru. And um, like I feel one like of those people on the red carpet, like who's like analyzing outfits and interviewing people as they go in into out of like shows and stuff. That'd be great. Like the Ryan. Seacrest. That would be fun. Yeah. That that would actually that would be really fun because I feel like all my snark could come out. Which yeah, would yeah. Fun. I feel like I feel like Isabel could be maybe yeah like a fashion journalist. Maybe she went yeah, to journalism something school. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Something like that. Okay. But I mean, you know, I went to school, but I still I have the connections, so I got the yeah. job through somebody else. And, you know, right. Like Warren Buffett yeah. put in yeah. a good word. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> like someone put in a good word. I, I like everybody wants me because they put in a good word for me, like all the places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think we're gonna I, like the most important question we're gonna ask you, and it's uh, a risque question. All right. We ask this with all of our guests. I'm just building okay. up. It's not that big. Uh, <laughs> okay. Of the of the main of the main cast, who would you fuck, marry, and kill? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't want to answer, that's fine too. No, no, no of course I'm going to answer. Are you crazy? Um. Okay. So, um, all right. Fuck, marry, and kill. I would marry Dan because he's Aww. just like the nicest, mm -hmm. right? 
We're talking about the actual characters, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not like yeah. the people. No, no, no. <laughs> but we can do that next if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, fuck, who would I fuck? I guess it would be. Oh man, this is a tough one because like now I'm just dads like, are included or moms as well. You know, like oh, okay, like everybody include to Rufus yeah. and Lily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Rufus, yeah. no. Unless you want, to, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want waffles in the morning, sure. But other than yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not a part of the equation. Though. It's just the no, X no, no, yeah. no. I think Buck would have to be. Um, oh God, what was Chase's character's name? I'm totally blanking. Nate. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nate. Yeah, probably Nate. Um, and then who would I? Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> she stole my answers i told you i, is- <laughs> I love jessica she's a fantastic person but i hate that character <laughs> i think so yeah. you're not the only now? one you're not the only one that's that's been aaron's like that uh thing that he's been on you know yeah <laughs> well yeah. it was just sort of like i don't know i felt like it, it just I, I shouldn't say anything because i actually do want to work again and I'm, <laughs> I'm, <you> know, <laughs> we'll say yeah. it we'll say it why did she come in through the window why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't it's know. Not I love Connor. her. And I thought she, and I think she's a good actress. And yeah. like, I think it's fine. I think it's just that character just like needed something to me. I don't know. I think that was it. They didn't really yeah. know what to do with her. They just sort of threw her in because they needed her, I guess. And then it's for comfort. I don't know what she was in the book. What, what, I, I don't know about the book. Yeah. Was we, she we exactly that? Like, that? I don't think she like was Dan's even friend. In. Yeah, maybe. I don't, it, was she even in the book? Aaron, do we even know? know? I have no, no, no. We're more the extra the TV show, not the. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I mean, I guess if uh, lockdown lasts longer, we'll we'll get to those books. Uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) True, true. Um, Well, actually, uh, uh, that reminded me of a question that we wanted to ask was like, who did Isabel have her eye on? Like, did did Isabel have any secret trysts? Uh, you know, had her eye on everybody. That was the whole thing. (laughs) Isabel was out. She was like, you know, ready for action all the time, all the time. (laughs) Fair enough. So it was, it was, the answer was just yes. (laughs) The answer was yes. Exactly. That's amazing. Isabel was, as, as my friends and I used to always say, loosen the caboose. Okay. (laughs) That's a, that's a good, yeah. That's a good thing to put on the tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Loose in the caboose. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> were there any like is heavy storylines or anything like that that like almost happened or or like things that you thought you were going to be able to do with Isabel that didn't come to fruition um you don't know I honestly I think that like Isabel and Kati were supposed to just be yeah I mean characters you know what I mean like right. pretty yeah. like caricature funny like you know what I mean kind of like matching you know what I'm saying so I don't feel like there was ever like a really big storyline or anything like that would i like to see it come back sure why not like i would love that that would be awesome and then then the 2.0 like isabel's got a whole story and a whole life Heck she yeah. made this whole thing happen why not <laughs> yeah. we're starting the, we're starting our campaign today it's happening yay okay good <laughs> good uh and and yeah I, I i definitely feel like at the very least you bump into the, the you know the previous minions getting you know shit face at the bar you know like i feel like that's yeah. definitely like, oh, have they just been here? This whole, like they're like only like a block away from high school. Like that's how far they right. got. Yeah, they've just right. been there for like sitting there for 10 years. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. And we're just kind of like, no, guys, this is how it's done. Let, yeah. let us show you how it's done at the bar. The, the golden headband and then superpowers emerge like when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you miss New York? I always miss New York. Yeah, I love, I mean, New York is the greatest city in the world. Honestly, truly it is. Like for me, I've lived so many places and I I couldn't live there right now. Like I I just, I couldn't do it with like three kids and just like, even before, even before this whole, the coronavirus and everything like that, I, I was ready to go. Like after I had my first child, I was just like, I'm done. Um, But going back there, I, I don't ever feel like that nostalgia of just like, I don't feel the nostalgia of like, oh, I wish I lived here. I'm just like, I'm just so happy when I'm there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I miss, I don't totally do. I mean, I lived there for 10 years. I met my husband there, had my first kid there, obviously did Gossip Girl there, modeled there. So I have so many great memories. Um, And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an awesome city. So yes, the the long-winded answer to that is yes, absolutely. I miss New York. (laughs) All we want is long-winded. I mean, okay, good. 
That's that's where I that's, that's where I live. Long okay, we do. you picked the right girl. You picked the right girl. <laughs> Uh, well, I think Aaron, do we have any more any more gossip? I mean, I mean, we could go. I don't know. I mean, we like, could go all day with gossip, but I yeah, think yeah. there's, you know, there there's more to Nicole than just Gossip Girl. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and maybe we'll remember something and pop in. Uh, yeah. Or or. Totally. Uh, but yeah, like since, uh, I guess yeah, I sort of would rather hear you say it than me. <laughs> like since Gossip Girl, you sort of. I know you were actually taking uh, ma like getting your master's in nutrition as you were on the show, right? Yes. Yes. I was doing that. So I did my whole master's online in nutrition. Um, and yes, it was kind of a crazy time because I would be, you know, working all week and then on the weekend, you know, it's all like, you know, self-motivated study, essentially. I didn't, I mean, it was all, you know, lectures and all that stuff, quizzes and everything was mm -hmm. online. Um, I did have to go in person for my final exams and stuff, but, um, yeah, it was kind of hectic. Like I would be in my dressing room, you know, working away, studying. I would also be doing it on the weekends. You know what I mean? I mean, it didn't, I, I would always make time to like go out if I wanted to go out, you know what I mean? But I definitely spend like the days, like all day, Saturday, mm -hmm. all day, Sunday, just like hold up in my apartment studying. So, um, that was an interesting time for sure. <laughs> um, like going out was your number one priority though. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Well, Obviously. you know, they, what do they say? What do they say? Life imitates art, imitates life. I yeah. <laughs> Well, you're doing research. Like you're, you're doing research for the Upper East yeah, Side. You got you got to know what it's about. Yeah, I got to know what it's about. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. So I, I made time for going out. Uh, <laughs> that's like a big part of New York, though, right? Of course. It's like yeah. That life is so fun. It was so fun. Like I don't have any regrets about that. Like oh yeah, it, that was like the best part. You know. Um, so yeah. So I got my master's in nutrition. Um, I started working a bit in nutrition. Um, met my husband. We got married. We moved had my first child there in New York, like I said, and then we moved to Miami. And then after Miami for a couple of years, we moved to Turkey, Istanbul. Oh. I had my son in, in Miami and then we moved to Turkey when he was a newborn. Um, and we were there for like 18 months. We would have been there longer. We were gonna ask to stay with his company. company. We were gonna ask to stay longer, but then shit kind of hit the fan in Turkey. And then it was just like, you gotta go. So gotcha. we left, yeah, we left, we came back to the United States and we were in, um, my hometown, Rochester, New York, for two months while we kind of figured out like where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do. Um, and then we ended up in Chicago, um, which is not my favorite place. I didn't like Chicago. Like it was three years there and I was like, eh, this is not my place. Uh, too cold or, or, too, uh, or just not, it's not the right vibe? It not it wasn't my vibe. That that's mm -hmm. the thing. It's just like it wasn't my vibe. People love Chicago. Do you guys are you guys in Chicago? No, you're not. You're in no. I, I mean I like Chicago. Not Chicago's Chicago. nice. Chicago's nice. It's a good place, but I don't. I always like visiting. You're not yeah. offending us at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not. I wasn't trying to tra <laughs> trap. We no, love no, Chicago. Exactly. We love Chicago. Go right. Cubs. Uh, no. So um, no. I uh, yeah. I don't know. Chicago is just. It, it is really cold. I mean, like, and it's like dreary cold. Like like eight nine months out of the year it's just gray. And I'm just, I can't, I can't do that. No, that's the, that's like, the thing. Yeah. It's yeah. similar to Seattle. The Seattle is where I'm from and that's the gray. It's not the rain. It's the gray that gets you. Um, yeah. is it that much colder than Rochester. I, I went to school in uh, Ithaca. So I'm, I, I'm familiar oh, you did? with Rochester. Okay. I've had the garbage plate, you know, like I've. Yeah. I've, okay. I've, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Then, you know, <laughs> then, you know, the Rochester classic, that's the tradition, the garbage plate. Um, but yeah, so it is colder it's colder because it's like that chicago like cold to the bone like it's the wind, like the wind chill yeah, I don't know. yes it's just like and rochester is really cold too and also gray but i think rochester is snowy like more snowy than chicago is chicago is just like bitter you know like you just don't want to be out there and it's so windy yes yeah no i don't um, know i grew up in la so i don't know oh okay so then you're like living the dream yeah, you're just living the dream. yeah i don't know what snow Aaron's is. just uh, always been living the dream yeah <laughs> i okay. try to <laughs> I, I I love LA actually. It's it's a no go for my husband. He's like he's like we're never moving to LA, and I'm just like, but I love it there. It's so nice. I'm, so this was this the Colorado is our is like our happy medium. We're is the like, closest to through. LA, yeah. He, well, yeah, basically, right? <laughs> he um he really likes the cold. He's from Wisconsin, so um he like loves cold, cold, cold weather. And I really like warm weather. Miami was my jam. I was just like, okay, yes, I can be in a tank top and a skirt every day. Like I loved it. It gets very mm -hmm. hot in the summertime. I mean, that's not my jam, that part of it. But um, but yeah, so with Chicago, like he went to Northwestern too. He has a lot of friends that were there mm -hmm. still. I, I don't know. I just like 
just wasn't my place, wasn't my vibe. Um, so Colorado is my vibe because like we both love the outdoors a lot. Um, I'm an avid hiker. I like to ski. I just like to be outside all the time. And I feel like you can do that here. I mean, it was just Christmas day. It was 60 degrees and sunny. And you can do that. It's like the same thing what you can do in LA, right? Like, except we've got, you know, we've got the slopes. You know what I mean? I guess you have some skiing in LA too, right? You can get the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, Up in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that is sort of, I think Colorado and LA are like, or California, it's nice that you sort of within an hour radius, you can kind of hit everything. Although I guess you can't really do the beaches. We beach. Um, Yeah, no beach. But you have better skiing, certainly, and and more better mountains, I I would. Well, yeah. I mean, it depends on where you're in California. LA, there's not the the same, you know, obviously not the Rockies or any of that. Right. Um, and the hiking is just like amazing here. And right. I mean, like, like there's a trailhead, like right in my backyard, basically. And a very friendly, maybe not so friendly mountain lion that's been stalking oh, the neighborhood the past week. That's nice. Been a little terrifying. Oh, no. <laughs> The mascot oh. of the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, just it, thirsty. Like, it's, running, it's, just it's thirsty. running around. It is running. It's coming out at like 11 o'clock in the afternoon, in the morning. I'm just like, what is going on here? Uh-oh. Everyone's like, I've never seen this before. And I'm just like, yeah, your girl's here six months and there's already a lion like running around. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I live in the jungle book. <laughs> like, seriously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I, I have to, I've been holding it in, but I have to say, I tried the chia pudding recipe. Okay. Because like, I, like that is sort of your, it, it seems like in the last year, actually, that's been sort of more, uh, the lifestyle blogging and, and pu- like being mm-hmm. on Instagram, you've been more active and, and we've been loving it. That's how this is now happening, uh, us yeah. meeting. Uh, and yeah, I just, uh, bre- healthy, healthy breakfasts have always been like my, this elusive thing, like something that actually is filling and good and not like not waffles from Rufus. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. And, and I discovered overnight oats this year and that was like the best thing. And, but then I was sort of like, okay, I've done this a whole year. I'm ready for something else. And then the your chia pudding just arrived. The chia pudding came in and you like that? Okay, perfect. I did. Yeah, good. so I just want to say thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so <laughs> welcome. I think your original question was like, yeah, your move, your nutrition, whatever. And then I just started talking about where I live in the weather. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, I don't, no, I don't think I, I'm not that coherent either. So. Oh, okay. No, perfect. And that works yeah. out really well. Um, yeah. So yes, I have started my personal brand and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I mean, it's amazing how those kids, they just take up like every ounce of your time. Like, I mean, it's like every second of your time they take up. And so there's that plus like with all the moving around and stuff, there was like never really a chance. And now I finally feel like, okay, it's time for me to like make my mark and do my thing. So yes, putting nutrition out there has been awesome for me. I love it. I, when I, when I got my master's in nutrition, I was like, I don't think I ever wanted to work with individual clients. I did do some of that, but I, I really wanted to kind of meld nutrition and my love for like TV and video. And, you know, I love being in front of the camera. I love to just kind of talk and be my personality. So, you know, I, I wanted to kind of put it all there. So I felt like for me, that was just like the next, the perfect next step is like kind of starting a YouTube, doing the Instagram and Instagram is actually the social media that I feel like I, I understand the most, which is why like I'm heavier there because like, I get it. It's like, you put up a picture, you put up a recipe, you say something about it and then it's over. Right. Like I, I don't understand Facebook. It's very hard for me to understand Facebook. Like I, I don't yeah, know why I, don't... I just, I, I can't get it. I don't know. It's like the messenger is separate from the app and I, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I've been putting up nutrition stuff and you know, mom stuff. I kind of want to just have like this whole lifestyle where I'm doing nutrition travel is a huge thing, but of course that was all clipped this year. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that, that part, that, that's what I'm missing a lot is actually the travel. That, that part has been kind of difficult for me. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you about that since I, I'm the same way. Like, I think I read that sort of, I mean, your philosophy on travel, that it sort of opens you to new life experience and also just new culture and that, and that sort of thing. And, and that is for me, like what I'm missing the most, like I just have sort of what's out here and, and, and same with you, like Colorado is a great place to be, but how mm-hmm. have you been coping or how have you sort of found adventure in the backyard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so interestingly, I feel like I'm like a special case. I was one of those people that decided like through this, you know, through the quarantine, I'm like, uh, we're leaving. I'm like, we are leaving Chicago. We're moving. So for the travel actually for me, 
has been totally taken care of by living here because we just moved here six months ago. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so being able to like explore Boulder next week, we're going to up, up to the mountains. So that will be fun. I feel like I, I've been lucky enough, like within a car's distance, as we were saying, I can kind of get around and see stuff. And there's so much hiking just around here. So I feel like my travel, you know, my, my focus on travel has been just put to like, literally like hiking and mountains and just being able to be outside all the time. Cause I had years of not being able to do that, you know? So for me, I feel like I'm getting mm -hmm. so much from just, I can walk outside the door and there's a mountain there, or, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, It's cool. And a mountain lion, but also a mountain. So well, you, not, not everything's perfect, right? There yeah. has to be. Right. There's a price. The price is it, it comes with it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You could get eaten. You know, okay. I could get eaten, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful scenery, but I could get eaten. You never know. But it's like at least, you, yeah, you're like sort of dying with a nice mm. setting behind. Yeah, you. yeah, it's a great view, but I'm cut open by a mountain yes, lion. Totally, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, like I feel like. Uh, I definitely miss that. Like city living is great in a lot of ways, but yeah, just like being with trees, you know? <laughs> it's so nice. Yes. But trust me, I do have like travel plans. Let's put, yeah. Well, I was going to sure. ask you, so like when this is sort of the new normal, whatever it is, when that's sort of safe again, what is the, what is the place that you're, you're jumping into the plane to go to? Or car? Well, I think, so we had, we had a trip planned for my mom's 65th birthday to Greece. So I think that's going to be the first place that we go. I have been there before and I love it. And I, I've actually been there a few times. I love it. But like, I always want to go back to Greece. Greece is like awesome. That's like, it's such a nice place to be. So I think that's the first thing that's actually on the horizon for us. And then honestly, like we have been jamming with the road trips. We love road trips. And I, mm -hmm. I've been dying to go to Montana. So it's a little bit more attainable now since we're in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, nice. We were in... New Mexico is that where the like pow skiing is yeah New Mexico out yes that's where it is so I'd like to check that out too because that's not so far away so I feel like there's some good places close by like sort of living out west now right because I'm mountain time so I'm like west I guess I feel like has opened up all these possibilities for us and we could even stay you know in the United States and see a lot of stuff that I haven't seen before so I'm just excited for any of that yeah, I mean, the US yeah. is huge. I mean, there's 50 states, like, and everything, I know. like, and there's a million parks. Like, you can spend your whole yeah. life just exploring the US and not see totally. it. Totally. Yeah, I a road know. trip is the best. I know. I mean, even with three kids, honestly, like, it's a little, it's a little rough with the kids sometimes. Yeah, say, how big, they, you need a big car for that, right? Yeah. I have a big car. I, yeah. Yes, I have a big car. So that's good. But um, it, it, it can be a little rough. It can be a little rough. But I will say that, like, there's less, there's less stress, you know what I mean? Because it's like, there's no time constraints. There's no mm -hmm. like rushing to a plane. You know what I mean? There's no dealing with like, if your kid is screaming and it's just the car, it just pisses off the, the people in the car, right? It doesn't piss off like the entire plane. Yeah. So that part's nice. <laughs> that part about it is nice, you know? And the kids, I honestly, I feel like, especially my middle one, my son, he says that the best part of road trips is actually being on the road. Like, like he actually likes to be confined in the car with just the five of us uh -huh. more than the destination which is interesting. So yeah. I feel like I might've been like that. Cause I, I used to read in the car. Like I didn't get sick by that. And I would just get a ton of reading in and then get to just look out, you know, my, mm. my mom would give me like a penny for every horse I saw. So it was like good counting. That's oh, a, that was oh, a, that I was like a good that idea. Did. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. My, my kids would be so motivated by that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it they're all about the money, you know, a lot of horses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. When we drive up to the mountain, there probably won't be any horses this time. But well, that's that's good for you. Like, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll be looking the whole time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think it was like five cents for. Well, no, like a sheep. Like if you see any sheep, you see a ton of them. So that could rack up. But like eat different animals at different uh, money thing. Like I think goat was like ten cents. So like you're looking for the goat. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a whole. I'm gonna do world. like a whole chart. I'm gonna do like oh, a whole chart, like, like of I mean, all like the animal things. bingo yeah. kind of a thing too. Yeah. Yes. How many how many mountain lions do you see coming at you? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> one is too many. That thing was huge, <laughs> honestly. Oh my god, I can actually see him in the window behind. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, um, he was in my backyard on Tuesday night, so I didn't um, see it. But my next door neighbor is just like, "Yeah, he walked over to your backyard." I'm like, "Well, that's nice." Interesting. Yeah. Aaron, you had a bone broth question. Ah, oh, the bone broth. Okay. Nicole, Nicole, I got lost in your bone broth recipe. Okay. What do I do? What do I do with it? <laughs> like, I, I I get that it's it's a soup. I can use it as a soup base. Um, you can. 
I, I, you know, I can marinate, I guess, but can I, what else can I do with it? I felt like there was so uh, much more. Can I like, and you made it kind of creamy. Can I rub it on my oh, face yeah. to de-age me? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's exactly <laughs> what we'll do. No, you just drink it the way it is. That's all. Okay. You just drink it the way it is. Does it substitute That's- a meal or is it, am so, I on a liquid yeah. diet? So, okay. I'll give you an example. I fast two days a week. So I do okay. like a 24 hour fast twice a week. So I basically don't eat on Mondays and Thursdays. Okay. So like my last meal is like sat- Sunday night and then I eat again Monday night, right? Oh, man, so you're and fasting that, right now? You know what? I switched it this week and I fasted uh-huh. yesterday. Gosh. Yes, I fasted yesterday because we are traveling on Wednesday. And so on Thursday, I'm going to be with my friends and it's New Year's Eve and I'm like, I want to eat. And I'm okay, like, okay. so um, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm skipping that that this week, but I moved it up. So, um, but yes, typically I'm fasting on a Monday and I'll just have bone broth and tea basically because it's because it's really really it's like excellent for you it has so many there are so many nutrients in bones and it's so funny because like when i was growing up whenever we had meat my mom would just chew on the bones and i was like that's so weird i'm like that's so weird why is she doing that but it's like all that marrow has so many nutrients in it for you and it's so good honestly i feel like it is i have an autoimmune issue and i feel like it has helped so much with that just having those two days where i'm just sucking down the bone broth and just drinking tea and water. It's like giving your body a little bit of a rest, yeah, but still getting cleanse. nutrients. Yeah. But still like getting it. the nutrients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not, I want to do that. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. It sounds yeah. great. And I, yeah. I only made it creamy by just like putting a, um, like a tablespoon of coconut cream in it. Okay. Like literally like coconut cream from the can, just like pop it in there, pop it in. make it a little bit creamy and put a little rosemary. Oh yeah. I, I'm kind of wanting that right now, actually. Yeah, no, and then once I, when I was reading, I was like, okay, I gotta save those prime rib bones from Christmas. So, yeah. yes, that's exactly what you can do. But you can go to like the grocery stores too, and then just they have like bones for sale. You can just like throw that all in. You have an instant pot because the instant pot is really what makes it like. So I have a fast. crock pot. Can mm. I? Yeah, I it's gonna pot. take a while. Yeah, okay. I mean that's the thing. The instant pot, like you can be like have all everything done in an hour and a half. And normally it takes like, you know, you've got to really, if you're putting out a regular pot, you've got to like stir it yeah. and be around it for like 12 hours. You it's know, it like marinara, you know, keep the sauce stirring. Got to keep it stirring. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what makes an instant pot? It's just magic. It just like, it just squashes that it time. Is, <laughs> it is like literally magic. You press the button and it's just instant. No, um, it is, it's, um, it's a pressure cooker. That's all. Oh, yeah, it's just okay. a fancy pressure cooker. Yeah. So that's, you know, and it just has different settings. So it's like one touch, right? That's what everybody loves about it. It's like, it tells you for soup, do this, for this, do that. You know what I mean? So, right. but I love my instant pot. I make breakfast in it. I make bone broth in it, soups. I make everything in it. And it's, and it's the best thing for multitasking, right? Like you do that. It's doing the mm-hmm. work for you while, yep. you while you parent, teach, yeah. exercise, all the things that you do. Yeah. All the things, <laughs> all the things. that I do. Exactly. You got to have them in an instant pot in this life. <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess I gotta go. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you sold me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said you're not taking any clients as a nutritionist, but I was wondering if for a second we could uh, get some. I wanted the, some supplement advice for for okay. Aaron and I. Like, um, we're, we're creatives, right? Like writers, and, and w- like, what what do you think we could potentially be missing in the supplement realm? Or like, do you have any vitamin recommendations that could sort of get our brain? popping does that make sense okay mm-hmm. there's a couple things so i tell everybody they should have an omega-3 supplement are you taking any of those i'm not but no. i oh you definitely i can. know it's, it's one of those things like oh yeah i know i could i could be doing that but I yeah <laughs> yeah 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 no i definitely i tell everyone they, they should be taking omega-3 for sure because i mean like you can take so much of it and it's just benefit after benefit after benefit like those like you're not gonna have any side effects like i take like two to three grams a day so it's like two I, I take it twice a day, basically. I take it in the morning and I take it at night. Um, and it's just two of those like capsules. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great. It helps with like mood. It helps with, honestly, the thing that it helps me the most with, I feel like, is I have a that elbow that we were talking about. Ah. When I actually broke my elbow, I had to have surgery on it and I have pins in there, like metal pins holding mm-hmm. it in. And I probably don't need the pins anymore, but um, they they irritate me. Like it, Like the joints kind of irritates me. So I don't have any issues. I was having a lot of trouble with just kind of like, even just touching my shoulder, I could like kind of only go to here until I had like pain. I bumped up my omega-3 and like within a couple of months, I was just like, I can do everything again. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like that's so good for like lubricating your joints for, you know, helping with like just mental health in general. They give it to people that are depressed. I mean, 
So definitely omega three, I would say first. Vitamin D is probably the second one. I'm on that. Okay. Gotta have You're that. on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's really good. Um, let's see. You want another one? Uh, yeah. Whatever Please. your whatever. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a regimen, like if you my if, top three if, vitamins. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, top three. Okay, so then top three would be um, omega three, vitamin D. I also take iron though, but I don't know. For you guys, you may not need iron. I th- yeah. Iron ha- helps me a lot. I eat um, a lot of red meat, so I don't know if I need iron. I do too. I eat a lot. I, of, people think that people like think that they're just like, but you're a nutritionist. You might, well, first of all, everyone thinks I'm a vegetarian. They look at me and they see vegetarian. Every single person <laughs> I know, like it's so weird. And I'm just like, I'm a straight up meat eater. Like I love steak. Like mm-hmm. I will sit down and jam on a steak any day. Um, I feel like that gives you an edge in terms of sort of this this region that you're in because it did. I think most people assume nutritionists or or you know lifestyle personalities are you know, vegan, vegetarian, mm-hmm. all these different things. Totally. So you get to, yeah. you get to do it all. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. I mean, people think, I mean, I am gluten free. Um, but even that is kind of waning because I feel like I've through the bone broth, I think actually I've helped kind of heal my gut a little bit and I'm able mm-hmm. to tolerate gluten a little bit more. I like could not tolerate it for the past, probably six, seven years. And then, so I went gluten free and I felt a lot better. And then now just recently I noticed, cause like over the holidays, like I'm a nutritionist, but like, I'm very practical. Right. I'm just like, mm-hmm. you should, you should, I mean, food is meant to be enjoyed, right? Like you shouldn't be afraid of it. There are no good and bad foods. It's just like healthy food and those foods are not as healthy and you can enjoy the foods that are not as healthy too. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah. don't eat them all the time. Like, you know what I mean? But I'm like, if it's the holidays and there's Christmas cookies, I'm going to eat one. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't care if it's yeah. gluten-free or dairy-free or whatever, I'm eating the cookie. So like, you know, <laughs> um, so I feel like it's just important to have that kind of mindset. Like everything actually has a place, right? Like every right. food mm-hmm. has a place, maybe except for trans fats, trans fats are not good. But aside from that, like trans everything has a place. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. What was oh, I think, I mean, we were thinking for the third, uh, if there's a third. Oh, the third, yes. Okay, but yeah, like, the third. I, doesn't so, need yes. to be one. <laughs> no, no, no. The third one. So the third one, I would say, I, I actually do like a multivitamin. And I think a multivitamin is a good idea because even if you eat really clean and even if you're having, you know, the best quality food and all that, it's just the food now is different than it was 50 years ago. You know, like mm-hmm. the soil is different. You know what I mean? Like it, it's a long travel time. So you're losing a lot of nutrients, you know, like, I mean, an apple that, you know, if you live, I mean, I'm, you're not in Seattle anymore, but I mean, if you're in Washington, you're eating a Washington apple, then that makes right. sense. But like, if you're eating an apple that's in Chile, like by the time it gets to you, like so many of the nutrients have degraded mm. that, you're not actually getting an apple that has all of the full nutrients. So I actually think a multivitamin is good for everybody um, just as like an insurance okay. policy. Cause you're not going to get, you're not going to get sick off of having a multivitamin. You know what I mean? Then yeah. it's, but at least, you know, you're getting everything that you need. So yeah, omega totally. vitamin D multivitamin. Those that's are my like three. The, yeah. So that's the insurance. That's sort of the, the safety net. If you're missing anything, it sort of picks the, the holes and you're yes, all right, Exactly. Exactly. Oh man, you're saving our lives. Uh, Oh, yay. (laughs) uh, Do you have any like, like lunch or dinner hacks in the same way of sort of overnight oats? Like, I I mean, I think the meal planning thing is something that I'm just sort of now easing into, but it takes a lot of energy for me to like do something every day. I would love to just sort of bang it out. Like, but like, are there like healthy things like an overnight oats for lunch and dinner that- That you can just kind of, you know, prepare ahead of time. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm kind of all over the place with, with food. I mean, I, I plan out the meals for everybody in my family, kind of except for myself because, (laughs) because I'm always all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't know what lunch is going to look like today. I know that I'm going to get all the nutrients that I need because like I'm healthy and I'm like managed about it, but I'm not exactly planning out my specific lunch. I would say that anything that I think leftovers, honestly, like dinner leftovers make the best lunch. Because mm. they're pretty balanced. Like if you think about it, like they're pretty balanced, right? Like when you sit down and you have a meal for dinner, like maybe you're having meat and pasta and a vegetable, whatever, like make a little bit extra and save it for your lunch the next day. Cause you're going to get the most balanced round kind of meal in the middle of the day then again for the next day. That's what I think. That's that what I do sense. a lot. Yeah. 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 And you, That's what a I two do. for one is always the best. I'm a big leftovers guy. I love yeah, it. Yeah. You got to do leftovers. I love yeah. leftovers. I, I love a leftover yeah. situation. Yeah. For sure. But I also, you know, like even for my kids and stuff, if I'm home, a lot of times it's like, uh, 
like a little like a meze plate kind of thing you know it's like mm-hmm. instead of having a sandwich it's like deconstructed right i'll have like mm. the you know the the meat the you know all, just everything kind of separate yeah. Yeah, meat, yeah, like a salad yeah like a platter mm. i do that because I, I think breakfast is really carb heavy a lot of times and I just don't necessarily think it's, I, I don't think it's necessary to have like all these carbs, like all day long. In fact, in my house, when I make dinner now, I don't even, I don't even make a starch anymore. I don't, I'm just, well, first of all, I'm just done. Right. Cause like everyone's got these different needs, right. It's like, well, I want this and I won't eat onions and I'm not going to eat this. And I don't like how this looks. And I'm like, I'm going to make a meat or whatever the protein is. And I'm going to make a vegetable. There's no, there's no other, any, cause I don't have time to be like making like all these different things all the time. It's like, you're just going to eat this. And I, I mean, that's it. If not starve. That's it. Yeah, there that's you go. what I'm saying. That's like, it, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm like, this is not Burger King. You cannot have it your way. Like, that's <laughs> it. That is what I tell them all the time. All the time. Like, you're not happy with it? Guess you're waiting until breakfast. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Because you're not yeah. getting dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I don't know, like what happened. But I mean, I was definitely a picky child as well. And then that sort of just reversed. But like, I feel like I just always would meet people in college or everyone, everyone was that guy. It's, it's always boys too. It's always like, it felt like to me, they're just very picky and don't like anything. And it's just like, now I'm like, I have no patience for it, but that, that was me, you know, it was just like chicken tender. Yeah. That was the only thing I wanted. I, <laughs> That's I so funny. You hear these, I, mean, I hear these stories from parents sometimes like, yeah, my kid only ate waffles for like two months. I'm like, that would be really tough for me as a nutritionist mm-hmm. to like, I have to continue to like try every that's the one thing you know what I mean like yeah 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 I know people don't want to do that like I mean my son still to this day he's just like I don't want to eat broccoli I'm like I just don't care that is what we have you have (laughs) meat and you have broccoli and like every single time you're gonna try it and and you're gonna try it and you're gonna try it and try until you like it last night he ate all his broccoli I was very impressed but you just have to keep trying you got to keep pushing and pushing pushing yeah you know just gotta force him <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I feel like uh, one of the reasons we had you on right like in this time of year, sort of as we're hitting in, into this new year, it's been a, a tough year, uh, and 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 sort of I th- we're all sort of gearing up, assu- like hoping, praying that 2021 is better. Um, yeah. And. and while I also sort of acknowledge in me, I'm sort of like, ooh, that is putting a lot of pressure on just an arbitrary date. Like, oh, 2021 has to be better. But I was just mm-hmm. wondering, because you you're a very healthy person mentally, physically. And I was just wondering how you are looking at, you know, the the, the new year. And if you if you are like a, a resolution person or a, or like what, how do you enter a new year? Yeah, so that that's so funny because I was just talking to, like some different people about kind of how they feel about New Year's. And like, I'm not a big like Christmas holiday person as we talked about before. I'm just like, "Eh," you know, Um, New Year's is my favorite holiday. Like it is my favorite. And I think it's because it's just a rebirth, right? I mean, it's like, Mm -hmm. you can literally, I mean, any day, any moment you can be like, I'm gonna change and I can do whatever it is that I wanna do, right? But I feel like there's so much more permission around January 1st, right? Yeah. so I do make resolutions. I don't write them down. I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not touting them all the time or anything like that, but I definitely have some things in the back of my mind. You know what I mean? That I'm just like, I need to work on this for next year, you know? And then usually the resolutions come up like late December, right? So then I also tell myself, I'm like, well, I have three more days to be the way that I am. And then, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like the countdown, like I have three more days and I have two more days and I have two more hours and then, you know, and then it's like, I got to make this change, right? Um, but I also am like, you know, I try to be very mindful of the fact that like change is hard when you're an adult, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, you know, I mean, like, it's kind of like, you need to give yourself like the baby steps and the permission, you know what I mean? To just kind of do it in your own time, you know? So I, I will say, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. And as long as I'm making a really good faith effort at it, that's okay. Right. It's not like I'm going to beat myself up for whatever it is right right because i feel like that is the, the other sort of side of it a lot like i mean i i'm very good at finding ways to shame and guilt myself if i like i'll have these goals and then i just don't do it and i'm just yeah. like it's just like a way to be like oh, bad andy know. bad Andy. yeah exactly. i mean that's yeah. the human yeah. form i feel like yeah. everybody's like that right? right like everybody is that's what we do yeah it's it's a wonderful <laughs> thing being in yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I feel like that, that that makes sense. Like as long as you put in some effort and then there's, then you just wipe away everything else. Obviously nothing's perfect. That's the, yeah. the 20 and neither you and 2021 won't be perfect either. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can be slightly better. Who knows? Um, right. Just got to yeah. be the best we can be. 
That's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a never ending journey to that. And it's in that moment too, right? The best you can mm -hmm. be in that moment because you never know what's going to happen the next moment. So. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. The mountain lion could get in. <laughs> mountain lion could come in. So I need to make sure that every single moment that I have has to be really good because that, that mountain lion, like, <laughs> you never know. Now it's just a metaphor for whatever, whatever <laughs> is behind The mountain lion's coming. The mountain lion's coming. <laughs> uh, I, on one of the, like, I think I've had this as a resolution for a couple of years and Aaron and I were talking about it beforehand about like, we want to start meditation. We know that you are a, a big meditation person. It's become more important this year. And I feel like I've, I've had it times where I've gotten into it, but then it sort of becomes a task like on the to-do list that isn't, it doesn't actually feel like I'm being mindful. It's just sort of like, oh, I have to do this and then I can eat breakfast kind of a thing. How, yeah. like, do you have, like, it's the, the baby steps. What's baby step one to sort of get into meditation? So, you know, for me, it was what I had from my meditation teacher. I did like transcendental meditation a long time mm -hmm. ago. And now I do all different types of meditation. Like I'll use headspace. I will just sit quietly. Right now, actually, my big thing is using yoga as meditation for me because I feel like the, medi the, the amount of meditation that I get through my yoga practice, I feel like has just been awesome for me because I'm like kind of a busy person. Like I'm very like, you know, I'm all over the place. I have a lot of things going on and I feel like being able to just focus on the poses is a form of meditation. Yeah. And so I think that for me, I remember when I first started my guru, whatever it was, she was just like, you are going to get what you need from meditation. So don't worry about anything except for the fact that, cause I'm like, I would just fall asleep. Like I started and I, I yeah. had like a four month old baby and I was just like, I fall asleep every time. Like, and she's like, you're getting what you need. And she's like, that's just let it be what it is. Right. And it's so mm -hmm. you will have, you know, you will have the racing thoughts and you, I mean, I, there's no way that I can tell you that like, I meditate now and it's just all silent. Like, no way, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's just like no way. And like, because I've allowed myself to just be like, I'm meditating and some days it'll be feel really deep. And then some days I'll be like, yeah, I just thought about what I'm making for dinner the entire time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you just have to be okay with that, right? You know, you're right. just okay with it. And I think that the small doses really helps, right? I mean, TM says that you should be doing it 20 minutes twice a day. I've found benefit from doing five minutes once a day. You know what I mean? So I think that, I think it's just a matter of, you know, being easy with yourself, you know, and just being like, you know, I'm going to meditate. So I'm just going to like turn my phone over and just sit down and stare at the wall for a minute. That can be meditation, right? right. My husband doesn't yeah. do like a formal practice of meditation, but he, um, he listens to, he does something. I don't know. He does something, but it's like, it's not like formal meditation, but like for him, it feels meditative, right? I mean, taking a walk in nature can be meditative. For me, hiking is meditative. So yeah, I think walks. I think are, finding it yeah. walks are great. I think finding it in any like in any form. It doesn't have to be like I'm sitting at a pillow and I've got a mudra and like all this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, my yeah. therapist just said to pet the pet the cat for five minutes. You know, and that's totally. It. Yeah. yeah, totally. Lowers that's your blood idea. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. zone out. Yeah. yeah. Just zone out. Totally. Um, let's see. I, like it. I saw that you uh, recently started taking acting classes. Uh, oh, I know. I took acting classes again. I mean, after I did Gossip Girl, and while I was on Gossip Girl, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, I need to like actually figure out what I'm doing here. Um, and so I did it then. Um, and then, yes, it's been like 10 years since I've taken an acting class. And I'm just like, I'm just going to do it. It was sort of, it sort of just like worked out with my schedule. Like I literally saw it online and I was like, it starts tomorrow. I'm like, from the days that it means, I'm like, I think I can make it work. So I just kind of did it. I jumped right in and, um, and it was great. I loved it. I loved it. I actually feel like I got a lot more out of this class than I had gotten even actually when I was working too. But I think a lot of it too, it's like the past 10 years, like so many things have changed for me. You know what I mean? Like I've had, I have so much more life experience now just from going to mm -hmm. from 30 to 40. You know what I mean? That it's like, there's so much that I feel like I can put into it now that I almost felt like I didn't, I couldn't do before. Right. Like I felt like I couldn't get as deep as I could probably get now. I also right. am just like, I turned 40 and I had like this 40 year old blow up. And I just said, I'm just like, my motto from now on is zero fucks. I give zero fucks about anything. Like, I'm just like, no fear of failure. I'm just like, I'm just going to do it and just see what happens. Hopefully I land on my feet. You know what I mean? That, With everything in life. Yeah. I have to say it's very inspiring. Uh, no, thanks. I, I just want to follow, follow Nicole. That's, that's <laughs> my, that's my uh, resolution for 2020. Really, what, what do we have to lose? I mean, like, just like yeah. basic stuff. Like, what do I have, what do I have to lose? Nothing. Live yeah. your best life. 
That's really that's nice. what I'm saying. Because like the truth of the matter is, it's your only life. So mm-hmm. like, live your only life. And yeah. do you want it to go the way that it's going? I mean, let's hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the uh, so you're getting back in the acting game? Do you have a uh, is it is it to stay warm, stay ready for the Upper East Side, or do you have other uh, other plans, other goals in mind, or is it just sort of it was just it was calling to you. So you, you know, figured it, it out. It was and- calling to me. Yeah. It was calling to me at that moment. Um, but I would say my, my end game, my end goal has always been to have my own show. Like my own me, I, I always called it just me on TV. Right. Like, right. uh, you know what I mean? Like a Rachel Ray or something, you know, something like that, where it's right. kind of lifestyle encompassing different things, but also just, you know, my own personality and being on television. I, I mean, I think that part I can do, but I feel like it's always, it's always good to have the acting classes like because you you learn something every time and mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's just it's a it's a good thing to have you know and I am going out for just like regular acting auditions I have an agent here in Colorado um, I have one in Chicago also I was thinking about breaking back into New York again to LA um, so I mean we'll see like as this year goes on I was kind of thinking that those things could happen but yeah, I'd like to just kind of get back into everything, brush up, you know what I mean? It'd been a long time yeah. since I had done scene work mm-hmm. and like what, been with a partner and like, it was fun. So I got like a little bit of the book again. <laughs> yeah, it's back. Yeah. It's back. Awesome. Uh, well, Aaron, do we have, are we, did we do it? I think we did it. I think we did it. Yeah. Did we do it? Okay. I, I think we did great. Nicole. I was thank, awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. And obviously we have, we have fun and games happening on another thing that's going to already have happened when I'm saying this, but <laughs> they can find it on Instagram. Uh, you guys can figure it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, Nicole, so uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. This has thank been great. Thank you for having me. This has been super fun. Really awesome. I appreciate it. Well, uh, where can the people find you out, out in the social media world? Yeah. So on my Instagram, so I am Nicole Fasella. Uh, same thing on Facebook, Twitter, at I am Nicole Fasella, people. And then I have my website, NicoleFasella.com. Awesome. And Aaron, where can the people find us? Uh, the people can find us at Gossip Guys Pod. Uh, that's at Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. And you can email us, us at uh, Gossip Guys Pod at g- podcast at gmail.com. Uh, rate us, subscribe, tell us how you feel, what you think, and if you, we want to do better for you. And you can find me at the worst. That is the W U R S S T. And that's everywhere. And Andy, where can they find you? I'm at wandering green green with an E at the end. That's on Twitter and Instagram. And yeah, follow up with Nicole or us. If we have any other lingering questions, what did we forget? I'm sure we fucked up somewhere. So <laughs> but what question did we not ask? Yeah. Like we didn't ask like, I don't know, too many weird gossipy behind the scenes things. That's next episode. The next right. episode, dude. I'm, I'm we down. have to have the tequila. We have to have <laughs> yeah, that. Get, yeah, get yeah, the we'll Casamigos out. a little out. bit later next time. Yeah, I get the, get the, I'm really good at making margaritas. I'll make a margarita. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds good. And also maybe the Never Have I Ever secrets always come out on the Upper East Side. So. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, yeah, you, you don't have to force it. Uh, so uh, okay. yeah, uh, Intel. <laughs> Next time, well, we have an exciting year planned for everyone, and Gossip Girl 2.0 is coming. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. Until next time, XOXO. Gossip, Gossip guys. guys. <laughs> All right. I will stop the recording. <laughs>